In the last lecture, we learned about set method and update method in order to update a signal value. So we learned how we can use set method and update method to update a signal value. Now in this lecture, we are going to talk about another method called mutate. And this mutate method we also use for updating a signal value. So in this lecture, we will learn how we can use mutate method to update a signal value. And what is the difference between mutate method and update method? So mutate method works just like update method. The only difference is that you can use mutate method only on mutable values. For example, value types like number, string, boolean, etc. are not mutable. Let's say we are creating a variable a and to that we are assigning a numeric value 10. So an identifier called a will be created and somewhere in the memory this value 10 will be stored and that identifier will point to that value 10. But later in the program, when we change the value of a, let's say to 20, in that case, this value 10 will not change to 20. Instead, somewhere in the memory, a new value called 20 will be created. And now this variable a will point to that value. So you see, the previous value is still there, but since it is not mutable, it cannot be changed. And since it cannot be changed, a new value gets created in the memory and the identifier then points to that new value. So just like numbers, string and Boolean types, they are also not mutable. They are immutable. But arrays and objects, they are mutable type. Their value can be changed. For example, here we are creating an array and this array has three elements. So in the memory, an array will be created. And this identifier is going to store a reference of that array. Now, let's say later in the program, we push a new element to that array. So here you notice that that array itself has changed. We have not created a new array with that extra new value. Instead, in that same array, that new value has been added. So array is of mutable type. It can be mutated. It can be changed in the same way. Objects are also mutable. We can change its property value. But value types like number, string, boolean, they are immutable. Their value cannot be changed. So we should use update method when we are working with immutable type. And we should use mutate method when we are working with mutable type like arrays and objects. Let's try to understand the difference. Let's go back to VS Code. So in the last lecture, we used this update method inside this increment method. And here we are using this update method to increment this counter signal value by one. Now let's also go ahead and let's use the same logic inside the decrement method. So here I will replace this line with this statement. But here we want to update the value of this counter signal. And how do we want to update it? We want to decrement the current value of this counter signal by one. So in the previous value, we will have the current value of the counter signal. To that, we will subtract 1. With this, if I save the changes, if I go to the web page, and here when I click on this plus button, the value is incrementing. And when I click on this minus button, still nothing is happening. That's because in one of the lectures, to this click event, we bind it 0. But here, we need to set it to decrement method. Okay. This let's save the changes. Let's go back to the web page, and now this minus button is also working. All right, let's go back. So, here we also have another property called message, and this message it is storing an array. Now, what we want is we want to change this message property to a signal. For that, here instead of assigning a value. Instead of assigning an array, we need to call this signal function. And to this signal, we need to pass an initial value for this message signal, which we are creating. So here, for the initial value to this message property, we want to assign an empty array. Now, here we have an error because, again, this message property is now storing a signal. It is not storing a string array. So let's remove this type from here. And that error is gone. But if we want, we can explicitly specify that this message property is going to contain a string array. 
we can specify it here. So the signal is of generic type. So here we can use angle brackets and inside that we can specify the type. So here the type is going to be string array. Okay. So now this message, it is a signal. Now what we want is, so since we have changed this message property to a signal, now here we need to use it like a signal. And we know that a signal is nothing but a function. So this message signal here, it is going to store a function. And in order to get the value from within that signal, we need to call that function like this. And now that error should be gone. So what we want is every time this plus button is clicked, we want to insert, we want to push a string value inside this array. And whenever this minus button is clicked, we want to remove the last element from that message array. So inside this increment method, let's say this dot and let's try to access this message signal. And what we want to do is we want to update the message signal. And how do we want to update it? We want to add a new element to the string array which this message signal is storing. For that, on this message signal, we can use update method. Okay. Now, to this update method, we need to pass a callback function. And this callback function, it is going to receive the previous value. So, for the first time, it is going to receive an empty array because the initial value which we are assigning to this message signal, it is an empty array. So for the first time it will receive an empty array to that if we add some element then next time it is going to receive that new array with some elements. Okay, so here we are going to receive the previous array. I'll simply call it as prev message. You can name it anything and inside this prev message parameter we are going to receive the previous value of this message signal and to that we want to push a new element. So here I'll say prev message dot push and to this we are going to push a string value but now you will notice that we have an error okay so we know that this update method we need to use it only on immutable type here we are trying to use this update method on a mutable type now what this update method does is it does not change the existing value instead it overrides that value it creates a new value here, when we use update method, what it will do is it will create a new array and in that array, it will try to push the value which we are passing to this push method, which is not allowed by push method. And that's why we have this error. So we cannot use update method in this case. But if you still want to use update method, what you can do is you're already getting the previous array. From that previous array here, we are going to use a set of square brackets. In there, we are going to use spread operator on this prev message. So this prev message, it is storing an array. What this spread operator will do is, it will extract all the elements from that previous array. And now those elements will become an element of this new array. And in that new array, we can also add the new value which we want to push. So for example, we'll say current value of counter is, and then we'll specify the counter value. For that, I'll say this dot, counter and we will call that signal okay so what we are doing is here first we are extracting the elements from the previous array and we are making it an element of this new array and then in that new array we are also adding one more element so this is going to work if i save the changes and if you go to the web page and if i click on this plus button you will notice that a new div element has been added with the value current value of counter is one Okay, so every time we click on this plus button, it is adding a new div in the web page. So it is working as expected. But the problem here is that every time we are clicking on this plus button, every time it is creating a new array. In that new array, it is extracting the elements from the previous array. Okay, and then it is adding the new element. But here, we don't want this behavior. Okay, so here this approach is working but it is not the proper approach so here i'll comment this line and instead of using update method now we can use mutate method so now i'll say this dot message so it is a signal and on that i'm going to call mutate method and to this mutate method also we need to pass a callback function and 
this callback function is going to receive the previous value of the signal. So again, I'm going to call it as rev message. And now all we need to do is we need to push the new element to this previous value, to this previous array. Now, what do we want to push here? Let's simply copy the string value from here and I'll push it. Okay. So now if I save the changes, if I go back to the web page, the functionality should still be working as you can see. But now we are not creating a new array every time this increment button is clicked. Instead, we are pushing a new element to the same existing array. Because array is a mutable type, we can mutate its value. And to mutate the value of a mutable type, we are using this mutate method. But this update method, it cannot mutate the value. It will override the value. Okay, so even though we are using this update method on a mutable type, it is not going to mutate its value. It is going to override its value, which we don't want. So this is the difference between update and mutate method. Let me go ahead and let me copy this line and I'll also add it in the decrement method. But here we don't want to push anything. So I will remove this line from here. Instead, we want to remove the last element from the array. Okay. So every time the decrement button is clicked, we want to remove the last element from the array. And when we remove the last element from the array, the array will be updated. And in that case, Angular will know that this message signal has changed. So it will also update the UI. If I save the changes again, if I go back to the web page, every time I click on this plus button, it is adding a new div. And every time I click on this minus button, it is removing that div. So I hope now you have got the difference between the update method and mutate method. And when should we use update method? And when should we use mutate method? As we learned, the mutate method works just like update method. The only difference is that we can use mutate method only on mutable values. When we use update method, it overrides the existing value and create a new value. It does not change the existing value. And that is the difference between update and mutate method. We can of course use update method on a mutable type, but in that case also it is not going to update its value. It is not going to mutate its value. Instead, it is going to create a new value from the existing value.